L.A. Roberts Jewelers in downtown Martinsburg, where you can get that special someone, that special something. And the Skinner Accident and Injury Attorneys, SkinnerWins.com, in studio with New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Johnny. Good morning. And Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey, who uh, was thrilling us with some Alka-Seltzer water during the commercial. No, we are in a hydrogen-rich environment here. What because is of it's it's a it's it's <laughs> it's hydrogen water. It's what he says it is. Why do you have that? Do you, uh, do because you, I wanted it. What do you do with it? <laughs> because I watch a lot. I get I get caught in these algorithms on Facebook, and I have Gary Brecka and Joe Rogan just pumping my brain full of what I need. And I'm sure there's no so you, so, did sort you, of uh, you marketed it? affiliate. Yeah. What, what does it do it? for you? Is it just entertaining? It adds or what? hydrogen, more hydrogen to water. So do you pour it into the water that you drink, or I mean, what, what's the purpose of buying the product? Is my question. It, it's it puts it in there. You can see it. Working. It makes bubbles. <laughs> okay, but why? This is it's just for entertaining purposes. Right? No, it's not for entertaining it, it's, purposes. It, it, it's makes, for, it makes it healthy. Do you drink it? <laughs> do you drink the water? Yes, I no, I don't. I just I just make it and I just sit there and look at it, Rob. I, of course, this, I this drink is it. what I'm asking. It's a it's a water bottle. That's a water bottle. Yes. Okay. I, did, I didn't know. It has, it has a light in it, doesn't it? Yes. That's a UV light. Well, usually people don't drink water that's lit up. It's, you know, I'm just, I was if curious. If you go to Amazon and see the reviews, you'll know that. I'm not making fun of, of you. I'm just trying to get well, information. Well, John is. Kind of. John is definitely making <laughs> yeah. fun of you, but he can. You need an explosion-proof light because of the extra hydrogen. It's a very flammable gas. Gilstrap isn't sitting up tall because the chair's tall. That's his wallet. It's that thick. That he's sitting <laughs> that high up off the ground. That's, that's just why. That's so he can look down on us and make fun of us. I'm done. <laughs> Well, we are, uh, I think, uh, six, seven, eight, nine days away now from the Berkeley County Youth Fair, beginning. Beth Pansiona is with us. Beth, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you guys for having us. Thank you for coming in and having a vowel at the end of your name. <laughs> she wasn't expecting that one, John. Yeah. Uh, and Harvey, you don't count because the sometimes why thing doesn't apply to your last name as a vowel. All right. And Amelia Dugan, he's still smarting from the hydrogen water. Amelia, no, good morning to you. Good it, morning. It, it cures hurt feelings. <laughs> Uh, Amelia Smith, Berkeley County Youth Fair 2023, hence the tiara. Uh, and notice I said tiara, not crown. Am I accurate with saying that? Um, either or. You could say either or? Yeah. Okay. And, and you're part of a family dynasty when it comes to Miss Berkeley County Youth Fairs, right? Yeah, my sister was the one who crowned me last year. How cool is that? It's pretty nice. Right? It's never been done before. There have been sisters who have won, but never back to back. Is there another sister coming along? Unfortunately, no. Just a little brother. <laughs> how, how much, how many years difference? Uh, between me and my sister. Your brother. Oh, a year and a half. A year and a half. Okay. Well, uh, congratulations to you. How's your year been? Um, it's been pretty good. It's definitely something that I got to see a little bit of it mm -hmm. because of my sister being the queen and all the things that she did. But it's a completely different thing looking from the outside in and versus being like able to do all of those different things. Has Was most of your job, uh, will it be at the fair and the previous fair, or do you do a lot of stuff in between the year that is the fair of 23 versus the fair of 24? Um, most of the stuff that I did was during fair week, handing out ribbons, making mm -hmm. appearances at different events. But I have gone to other things like the Apple Harvest Parade and the West Virginia Association of Fairs and Festivals pageant in Charleston. Well, that's cool. And what's your involvement and limitations with Berkeley County Youth Fair 2024? Where, when do you stop? Um, I will stop Friday night after I crown my successor. Are you sad? A little bit, yeah. yeah. What school do you go to? Spring Mills. Spring Mills. Are you a senior this year? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and uh, next year, you doing anything in, in particular? Yeah, I'm currently dual enrolling at Shepherd in the fall, and then I'll just continue on with my degree after that. Okay. What are you going to study, if you don't mind, Thomas? Business administrations with concentrations in marketing management and agricultural entrepreneurship. Well, so you'll be incorporating all of those things. Mm -hmm. Farming, right? Agriculture and, and business, which you got to know how to run a business, Beth, to keep your farm alive. You do. That you do. These oh. days, right? Yes, absolutely. You do. Yeah. Okay. So uh, tell us about Amelia Dugan a little bit uh, in her reign of the last year. 
Um, Amelia has done a great job representing us for the year. Um, she's been to most all of the fair board meetings. And when you're crowned Miss Youth Fair, you become the voice of the youth for the year. So then they automatically get a voting right on the board as well. Um, so she's been great at voicing that for us all year and representing us across the state, going to fairs and festivals and participating at fairs and festivals as well. Cool. Um, and then she will crown a new queen on the second uh, Friday night and then I think there's a few things that the previous Queen still does the this year during the week um, as far as being the MC for a few different things um, but she's done a great job for us and we're proud that she was our 2023 Miss Youth Fair. Do many of the previous Miss Youth Fair show up for the crowning of the new Miss Youth Fair? Yeah, a, a good many of them do still show up to watch who is going to be the new queen, um, especially on those big anniversary years folks show up. But there are some that are pretty religious about coming every single year to see who the new, new queen is going to be. What number are we on this year? Queen-wise, let me look in the 64 will be the new one. 64 for the queen. Mm -hmm. And what number youth fair is this, do we know? 77. 77. So there are 13... When we didn't have a queen? Yeah, 1960 was the first queen, and that was Miss Charlotte Thurston Shade um, that owned our equipment with her husband. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said that name was familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. What's the best part of being the youth fair queen for a year? I think being able to talk with everyone. Like, I'm a pretty social person, but with my title, I've been able, like, instead of me going up and talking to everyone, mm -hmm. it's everyone wants to come and talk to me about whether that be myself or the fair, and I just love talking about that. That's nice. Mr. Gilstrap. Who are the people coming to talk to you? Not by name, but... Um, I've had Name the annoying ones first. <laughs> <laughs> um, New York I've had a couple of politicians, <laughs> business people, um, leaders of 4-H clubs and FFA advisors, just people in the community who want to know more about agriculture. And your goal is to be supportive of the youth fair, of agriculture in general, of what, what are your, what yeah. is your message, I guess? Um, I just, I think the most important thing is to let everyone know that agriculture is for everyone, no matter what thing that you do. I think that the fair shows so much of that because we have not only livestock projects, but indoor projects from baking, sewing, woodworking, all of that. And I think a lot of people only see the animal side of agriculture, and there's just so much more than that. So what are your thoughts as, as a young person, very young person, looking out at the future of, of family farms? The, the, the news media, the literature written on this is, is not all that bright in terms of the, the future of, of family farms. It's hard to make a living that way. Uh, is, is that where you want to go? Is there optimism out there to bring back the family farms and, and to thrive in that environment? Yeah, I personally want to own my own operation of cattle and hogs when I grow up just because showing is so important in my life. I think that agricultural literacy is really important and that as producers and there's a line in the FFA creed that says producing and marketing the product of our toil and I think that is so important especially in today's world where we need to be sharing everything that we do and spreading a more positive light on everything that agriculture does. Is this a good area for that? Um, I think so. It's becoming a lot more urbanized and that's okay because we still have our family farms mm -hmm. and there are a lot of different places in which we have like bigger farms not just in our area but in our state as well. I think that like even urbanized agriculture, just growing a little small vegetable garden in your backyard is a good way to start. And I think by doing a lot of research on that, you can learn and kind of debunk a lot of myth myths about agriculture. Hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, John. No, it's, uh, to, make, to make a living off of farming or uh, Ranching, in my mind, I'm, I'm going to get the terminology wrong, but to me, ranching is animals and farming is, is, is vegetables, right? Uh, to, how, what's the minimum acreage you need for sustaining that as, as to make She's a living? She's Miss Berkeley County Youth Fair. I don't know. Well, she's she's studying Kevin Costner. Stuff. I don't know. I just, is this a Yellowstone? Yeah, that's not something I quite know. Okay, that's fine. I'm sorry. All right, it's Gilstrap, you're muted for a while. Right. Now. Go ahead, Harvey. I, I would say, John, it's probably less than you think. I know of a, a farm around here that, that does very well at the farmer's market, and it's less than five acres. Really? Yeah. 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 I mean, if you 
I think the the Greenbrier's farm that they used to supply food for their operations is 40 acres. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You can do a lot on a small farm and not just, you don't need hundreds of hundreds of acres. Uh, and, and hydroponics. I'm shocked, actually. Have you ever had a garden? I, I, <laughs> I am the definition of the brown thumb. I, and do I, you know what? In hydroponics, do you know what they use? Hydrogen. Hydrogen water. Absolutely, <laughs> that's absolutely correct. <laughs> Hey, Amelia. Who's been sitting on that for a while? <laughs> uh, well, I always, I always have to, everybody always takes my questions before I get here. But um, do you have any, any designs to do any more pageants? Um, yeah, I am currently a contestant in the West Virginia Dairy Princess Contest. That'll be the week after our fair in Jackson's Mill at the State Dairy Show. Very nice. Did you get any scholarship money for, for this title? Yes, I did get a little. Does the next queen know who she is yet? No. The, the contest. Do you know? No. It's a, it's a contest. It's a contest. I know, I know, um, I know, I know. Just, tell us about I'm Friday night. The Friday, contest. August the 2nd, um, they will have their tea, which is where they will do their in-person interviews with the judges. There are 11 contestants this year, and we're hosting that at the Sycamore this year. Uh, we used to be there when it was Stonebridge, and when that closed down, we took it elsewhere, and now we thought, let's support our neighbors and take it back to the Sycamore. Um, so they will have their interviews uh, privately with the judges that afternoon and then that evening they will have the on stage portion they'll come up introduce themselves every person will receive one question on stage about themselves from their applications and then they'll narrow it to five the final five will all be given the same question um, and you will not hear the person before you they'll take the five to the soundproof room under the stage and then one person at a time will come up to answer the question amelia what was the toughest question that you got during your interview during my interview, mm -hmm. um, I don't think there really was a hardest question for me. Everything that they ask pretty much is based off of your application, and that is something, everything that I put on my application, I'm very passionate about. And I think that's why interview is my favorite portion of the contest, because they're asking me questions about the person I know best. So. I think that it's the best way to show my personality and really get to connect with the judges. Well, that'll explain why you won, right? You handled the questions flawlessly. All right, so you're going to be uh, competing in a, in a Dairy Princess pageant. Okay, here's my question for you. When it comes to milk, skim, 1%, 2% or whole? Or raw. Whole. Or Mark, whole. Mike Hornby, raw milk. Raw milk or pasteurized? You ever drink milk right out of the goat or cow? Yeah. 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 I'm not the biggest fan. But you've done it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I milked a goat once during the Berkeley County Youth Fair comp uh, uh, many years ago in the 90s. Celebrity milking uh, yeah, contest. Yeah, celebrity milking contest. I milked a goat. I felt like I was intruding on the privacy of the goat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I didn't know the goat well enough to touch it that way is my point. It just, it seemed like there should have been some space. I'm not a big milker. So I want to go back to the competition. How did the, the there'll be a selection from the 11. Mm -hmm. How did the 11 become the 11? They put in an application. They have to meet the parameters for the age, uh, 14 to 20. They put it, submitted an application by July 1. They also have to be a um, participant in one of our participating organizations for the Berkeley County Youth Fair, whether, whether that be 4-H, FFA, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, FCCLA, or the Boys and Girls Club, um, to be eligible to run for Miss Youth Fair. How many comp, uh, competitors do you have? 11 this did, year. Did you say that already? Did I miss that? I did. Okay, it's I'm sorry okay. if I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> so the youth fair itself goes from the 3rd to the 10th. It does. Yeah, and you have any big changes in the events this year, Beth? Um, there's not a ton of big changes. Um, we do have two nights of rodeo, which is always a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. So there's two nights of the rodeo this year, um, that being Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, truck and tractor pool is uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday is truck and tractor pool. Sunday night we are having a concert, um, Sanctus Real, which is a Christian worship band, is coming to play on Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, it's pretty much the same things, the flat drags, the uh, UTV flat drags, the demolition derby on Saturday night, and, of course, our livestock auction on Friday, uh, where all of the kids who have participated with market animals will then sell their animals on Friday evening in the arena. Is the demolition derby still the, uh, the big thing? Demolition Derby in figure eight is on Saturday, as yeah. well as this year we've added Championship Pro Wrestling at 2 o'clock. Oh, yeah. And then the Demolition Derby that and evening. The, and the dates associated with these days are what? Um, the dates for the fair are August 3rd through the 10th. Okay. 
And everything can be found on our Facebook page. We update that daily. Um, everything can be found on our website as well. Our schedule, everything is on our website. And can you still get the um, passes? You can still order passes ahead of time um, on the website by contacting our treasurer, Brandon Campbell. And then, of course, you can come to the gates. Something new this year that we worked on, um, we have card readers at all of the gates, and there'll be card readers at our concession stands, where in the past we've only taken cash at the gates and cash at the concession stands. So we will now have card readers to be able to take cards everywhere now at all, at all four gates. That's a plus. Is there anything that still needs to be done between now and Friday? Of course, there's still last-minute little projects that need to be finished up, some painting to do and those type of things. So if anybody wants to come paint, um, I'm sure we can find you something to do. Power washing, just the normal, just last-minute cleanup items. How many kids are you expecting to participate in the youth fair this year? The last I was told, there's over 500 exhibitors this year, whether that's indoor or outdoor projects. How does that compare to other years? It's about the same, I would think. Um, I don't remember the numbers from last year because I wasn't in an executive committee position to mm -hmm. rem to know exactly how many that was, but I think we're, we're trending about the same. Our barns are busting at the seams. Um, there's more and more animals coming every year. Do you have to begin planning to add more buildings? There's lots of talk about the future of the fair and how we're going to continue to expand um, to make it accessible for us to continue to grow. I mean, with the county growing and kids still wanting to be involved and th with these organizations, we need to make sure we have the room for it. it, is it does it, this have the distinction of being the longest youth fair, um, longest there are, running? There's three in the country. I actually had um, a young lady who's participating in Miss Youth Fair call me the other day to ask me, and she's researched it. There's three youth fairs left in the country, one in Wisconsin, one in Florida, and ourselves. Um, the oldest one was 1930, and we started in 1947. Now, what, what is the distinction between what Berkeley County Youth Fair and those other two youth fairs are versus other youth fairs that have, other fairs that have youth showing sure. and presenting animals? Sure. So the difference, um, and for one right in our back backyard is Jefferson County, um, adults can participate. They have the open show versus the youth show. So an open show is any buddy can participate you and I could enter animals into that or we could enter vegetables or baking items pictures photography that type of thing whereas in our fair and the other youth fairs you have to be a participating member of one of those organizations within the ages of 9 to 21 you can show vegetables you can you put them in the in the indoor exhibits like she was talking about you bring in your vegetables and your vegetables are judged based on the other vegetables that are there what's it like training a cabbage to <laughs> do what you tell it to do <laughs> the main thing we look at is you know is it is it done is it ready to be consumed um, you put three or four of each of those vegetables on a plate are they all similar in size you don't have one that's vastly different than the others very similar what the average consumer would want to see at the grocery store versus what we all know from the garden is totally acceptable to consume it just may not be the prettiest I can tell you this Food grown in your own garden tastes so much better. It does. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, we grow peppers and tomatoes every year, and I really look forward to well, You know what's odd this year? We had a pepper, like uh, weeks after we put the plant in the ground, one perfectly big, beautiful green pepper grew. And that was it. <laughs> it takes like a month to get the next one. Mm -hmm. And the same with tomatoes. We had three cherry tomatoes come out, and there wasn't like a flower anywhere else. It's the <laughs> oddest thing. I don't like people tell me that's fairly common, but I don't. It's kind of odd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what is the easiest animal to train to show, Amelia? Well, you got a frightened look on your face. <laughs> like, none of them are easy. I've shown a lot. Yeah. Over my years, I've shown everything except horses, chickens, and small pets. What have you shown? I have done rabbits, um, like beef heifers. Dairy heifers, pigs, sheep, and goats. Who's, who's the easiest? I'd probably say the rabbit. Who's the most challenging? I think, and this is my favorite species to show, pigs, because you're not walking them around on a halter. You have your whip and your brush and got to make them go where you need them to go. But I also think that steers and like beef projects are some of the hardest just because you spend so much more time with them. Mm -hmm. Our check-in is in April for all other species, but for steers, it's in December. So you have a lot more time Almost that you need to be working more. with them. Yeah. Who has the most personality? Probably say sheep. Really? Yeah. They just... They like to run around. If you've ever seen a sheep like start running, they like prance when they do it. It's the funniest thing ever. When you show a rabbit, 
Mm-hmm. What do, do you actually put them around a ring? No, you're on a table and you have your little mat for where you need to be. There's all these different positions that they need to be set up in based on their breed. So if they're a meat rabbit, you stretch them out long. If they're like kind of one of the cute little cuddly house pet ones, you kind of put them in a little ball and then you have to flip them over, check their eyes, nose, teeth, feet, all that different stuff. So. And they tolerate this being turned over? And yeah. Most rabbits actually don't mind being flipped on the back. You, they're just like little babies. Because you raise them from the time of little babies, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're very used to you at that point. Yeah. Right. So uh, Bugs Bunny eats a lot of carrots. Does their regular bunny eat a lot of carrots? Um, personally, I don't really feed mine carrots when I had them. What'd you feed them? They got their grain and then a lot of hay. So Bugs Bunny's just been lying to us all these years, Harvey. <laughs> he also talks. He does talk. <laughs> He's funny. Yeah. That's a funny cartoon right there, yeah. Uh, Beth, do we have the uh, eating contest this year, same as always? Yeah, the watermelon eating, the donut eating. I think they do a corn shucking contest. Um, ice cream. Ice cream eating. Um, all of those things for youth participants as well. Does the Youth Fair Queen participate in any of these competitions? Most of the time it's a um, yeah. volunteer told. Voluntold. What's the key to doing an ice cream eating contest without getting a brain freeze? Okay. It gets a little messy, but you take it and you put it in your hand. Hopefully you wash your hands before the contest starts. <laughs> right after you showed your steer or, yes. or milk to go. <laughs> you come in there. Yeah. Wash your hands first, but you got to put it in your hand. And the it ice will cream. start melting in oh. your hand and you eat it like that. And then you just yeah. pop it in. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that she had the answer ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just the strategy is there. What what age did you start doing youth fair, Amanda? Um, I or started at nine years old when I joined 4-H. So you've had a lot of experience doing youth fairs. Mm-hmm. So you know the key to these contests then. Yeah, okay. So they, it's experience. So if we had a quart of ice cream right now, that would be awesome to see <laughs> you demonstrate oh. the technique. <laughs> That would be pretty cool. I know the technique. I'm not great at it. Yeah, so that would be kind of, you're right, that would be kind of messy. Because yeah. it's not like a hot dog eating contest. It's a contained piece of food. Ice cream kind of, mm-hmm. it goes everywhere, right? What are you going to miss the most about uh, no longer being a youth fair queen? And does this also age you out of youth fair? You, I know you can do it till you're 21, but do, do you kind of, after you're the queen, are you kind of done with it? No, I'll continue to do it until I'm 21. Oh, cool. What are you going to do next year? Um, I'll probably continue with my market hog projects and my dairy heifer projects. All right, very good. What will you miss most about being queen? I think they're definitely long days, but I love doing it. You come in for every show in the morning, and I get to pass out ribbons for showmanship and market and breeding classes. I think that it's really cool to be like up close with all like the different types of animals and the people who have raised them. Mm-hmm. So. Who teaches you how to do this job? You kind of just learn as you go, I think. <laughs> Did your sister give you any tips? Um, caffeine. Consume caffeine. a lot of it. Take a nap when you can. Uh huh. How do you deal with the heat? Drink water. It's it's very hot. The youth fair is always very hot. Yes. Right, and there's always a thunderstorm that pops up somewhere along the way, mm-hmm. which. It just makes it more humid. It doesn't it does. wash the humidity that away. May, may I recommend hydrogen water <laughs> for the excessive heat? Can you turn the light on in your water again, Matt? Sure Show us all how that looks. Look at that. Amelia, would you drink that? I'd do my research beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Facebook. She's smart. She's good. You don't need to research it. Spin Amelia, up. thank you so much for coming out today. Thank you for having me. Uh, best of luck to you as you uh, serve out your final week or so as Youth Fair Queen and pass on the crown to the next person. Beth, thank you. Thank you. Where can people go to learn more about the events of this upcoming Youth Fair 2024? Uh, BerkeleyCountyYouthFair.org, or you can find us on Facebook at Berkeley County Youth Fair as well. All of our events and everything are posted um, just about daily. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you guys for having us. This segment of our show today brought to you by the 